he just hit hit on something that we've never really talked about before. Perhaps the reason selling and some of the other things are a challenge on modern on the modern product is because everything is cut so short for time. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I totally believe you're right on that comment. Yeah. It, it's not that they can't, they forget. Yeah. Because there's a referee hollering, you got 30 seconds. Right. Not hollering, just that's the way yeah. TV is. Sure. Espe- especially live TV. I, uh, I had an opportunity to talk to Nick Patrick a few weeks ago and he said something I had never thought about before. Um, he was asked, Hey, do you think you could go referee a match today? And he goes, no, but I think I could put a match together. And he started to talk about, of course, he's running deep South wrestling, which I think a lot of people remember his dad eventually turned into the power plant way back when. Yep. Uh, so they know a thing or two about training and wrestling. So check out deep South wrestling. Anyway, he said, Rick, and this, oh, and, 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 and Nick was a hell referee. Absolutely. He, uh, he said something I'd never heard explained before, but it made a lot of sense to me. He says these days, it, they don't call it in the ring as much. They do plan it ahead, which I, everybody listening to this knows this, but he said, I think a lot of that generation believes as long as they remembered everything they were supposed to do and executed it that they think they had a good match yes the idea being it's less about what the crowd says and how the crowd responds and it's more about hey we were going to do 50 things in this match did we do them all did we get it right did we execute them okay we must have had a good match and i think that is a fundamental difference that i'd never really had explained before but it made sense for me does it make sense for you it absolutely does. But then the second worst thing they do is assuming that the 50 movies they got in were on, were on accurate on time. Then they go and look at social media. Mm. I can guarantee you everybody. And, and, and everybody it's because it, it, it becomes a popularity kind of, I, I swear I said it last week. There are so many guys making money in this business because they're good at social media people. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. They're better. they're, They're better at social media than they are in the ring. In a weird way. Hasn't that sort of always existed once upon a time, the guys who made the most money were maybe the best politicians and some of the better workers in the ring. Maybe they weren't big politicians and social media is kind of just a form of modern day wrestling politics. No. Well, social media back in my day was just one, one, per, it was, uh, primarily Dave Meltzer and it was Wade Keller. Yeah. That was social media. And yeah, you want, and yes, I'm a victim of saying it too. I wanted, uh, you didn't read it as much then, you, you know, it just, anybody says they didn't talk to Dave Meltzer back in my time frames, a liar. I mean, you know, it just happened. And then, of course, I met him for the first time at my match with a steamboat. But everybody wanted to be in his good graces. And then some were and some weren't. And that's why he has heat with some people and some people he doesn't. So, you know, I I, I think it's existed everywhere, but now it's it's worse than ever because people, that, it, it is the deal. At least you knew Dave Meltzer's name. Yes. You knew Wade Keller's name. These people that have comments that are negative about you or me or our lifestyle or anything we do, they, they don't even put their real name up. Right? Yeah, I, I can't argue. I mean, that that is the thing of social media. It gives everyone a voice. Um, but you yeah, but, a- but, but but not not it doesn't. They don't. They don't have the nerve to call to be who they are. Right. Hey, my Can- name is John John Henley. No, yeah. but my name is in Sky Low Low on his thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, th- that to me, if they would identify themselves so that you could you could Google them, come back on them, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, act, I'd, I'd actually have to learn how to Google. I love that that's where your brain goes. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, talk some shit about you. That's yeah, just- yeah, I mean, well, that's what they do with us. Yes, I love it. I mean, that just that that's that's their pastime. Oh man, that is so good. I sit around and figure out what can I say shitty about this guy. He'll never know it's me. <laughs> and he'll poke his friend and say, 
Look what I said about Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest fucking show we've ever done. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, look at his girlfriend. Like, I just do Ric Flair. Ah, 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 ah. him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the guy that is true. You know it is. Ladies and gentlemen, it took a while, but we finally got the real Ric Flair on the podcast for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, my. He, 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 you guys say about Ric Flair? Ah, ah, he molested the world. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. I got tears in my eyes. It's, um, it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me. Uh, <laughs> my name, my name is Colo I have little tiny balls. What I said about Ric Flair. Ah. Oh God. <laughs> Shut up, man. Um. 